Welcome to today's episode of Champion TV, episode number three. To D Champion <laughs> TV, episode number three. You know, today's episode, I've been struggling in my mind to find the connective story to talk to you about today's topic, which is near and dear to me because because it was a question that surfaced in my life quite a bit, and it was, who am I? The men that I talk to, especially the guys that, that are interested in the conversation that we continuously have here in Champion, are usually tethered off of the conversation or tethered to the conversation of problems in the three pits of hell like I like to talk about to a lot of my guys, which is how I found my own peace, which is usually where they are in their lives, whether it's them going through hell in their business, creating this business that have now become their prison or going through hell in their marriage or their relationship at home where they're finding that what they thought of as being in a good marriage or being in a good relationship with the wife or the family or all of these things as a man is now the new prison that that what they thought was going to be a certain way is now not or the questioning of who they are which usually is a combination of the other th of the other two hell in your business or hell in or the business that has now become the prison or hell at home or the prison in your marriage or your relationship or who you believe that you are at home is now this prison because you are um, not certain in yourself in those places and that's causing you to question your choices in your business and it's causing you to question who you are at home spirals you into this next place which is who am i because unfortunately of all of the images of who you thought you were as a man at home with your wife and with your kids and as a family person or a provider and now in your business as an entrepreneur as a builder as a creator in this life if all of those things if those images of who you thought that you were when you got into those things after you've had some success and the peaks and valleys of your wins and your losses have now begun to question or they begin to come undone, they begin to move over into this third pit of hell, which is who am I? Your own personal identity. Which drives me to where I was. I remember sitting in that corner right there because this used to be 808 Fight Factory years ago. And in this corner was the heavyweight corner. All of the top fighters on the island trained here. Um, you know, Russell and Lewis and uh, Nico and, and, and Bryson and all of the guys who came up, all the different fighters that have made their way because this still in this day is the champion's house. This place has been here for a long time before we moved in here and set up our headquarters. But this back corner was the heavyweight corner. It was lightweights, middleweights, heavyweights. And myself, I'm a middleweight, but I tend to play with the, I tend to play with the heavyweights. And it was one day that we were doing our rounds. This was after our bankruptcy, after Sharon and I had been facing divorce for a long time and I was trying to rebuild my business and rebuild my marriage but I was still facing the question of who I am. Who am I? And while I had done all this searching, going back and forth to church and all these different uh, programs that I had joined and seminars that I had attended and, and attended and retreats and camps and uh, personal development stuff and spiritual things, I sat in this back corner jumping in round after round after round, getting my ass kicked, I'll be honest with you. Ass kicking after ass kicking on the mat, face plant, bleeding, um, swollen lips, swollen nose, pulled muscles, joints beating me to death. And I sat down after one of my rounds and I remember crying because it felt so much better getting my ass handed to me than it did facing the reality of my life outside of this place. Because at least here I knew, I knew the pain was coming. And out there I didn't, I couldn't, I, I, I couldn't get in front of it. It was arguing every day with Sharon. It was taking a look at Marquise as a young child, or it was when my twins were born, how am I gonna provide for them? Or in bankruptcy, having to call my landlord of the million dollar house that we lived in, that we were renting, moving into an option to buy the property that we were already signing under contract, asking for more time because I didn't know how I was gonna pay bills the next month. Having to call Mercedes Benz and have them come and get our car. Having to face constant questioning from attorney after attorney. All of the people that look up, looked up to me in business were now looking down on me because all of the things that I had hung my hat on to who I thought that I was in my identity crisis was now evident. And the only satisfaction that I had, the only reality that I had was when the timer went off on the next five minute round that I would crawl back into the center of the mat 
and do what I could, even if what I could was nothing more than fucking hold on for the last three minutes of those rounds because that's all I could do. And I remember sitting there and, uh, man, it was just my time again. As a matter of fact, now that I think about it, it wasn't my time. It was somebody else's round. And I rolled onto the mat and I remember somebody said, Vic, give somebody else a chance. And I was like, man, I can't. Because I didn't fucking know what else to do. And it wasn't that I didn't know what else to do. It was I didn't know who else I could be other than this person who could take it, you know? Because I had no other identity. You see, I wasn't even a fighter. I wasn't getting in the ring anymore. I wasn't even fighting professionally anymore. I'd given that up. And to stack on to that, I wasn't a fighter who I prided myself on being because I was good. I was no longer an investor because I had lost. I was facing divorce, so I wasn't gonna be a husband anymore. Within that divorce, I knew that I wasn't gonna be around my kids. So I wasn't going to be able to be the father that I had defined myself to want to be from my chasing of who am I as a dad. And now, with all of those titles gone, I was stripped down to just being a man. And I didn't even know what being a man was because I had no real teacher. All the men that I had saw before me, that was my definition of a real man had failed. <sighs> so in the prison that I held myself in crawling on and off the mat every day in this specific conversation it was just that shoulder roll back onto the mat for the next five to ten rounds of five minutes of ass kicking because that pain felt better than the pain of my life outside of this place and lo and behold nine o'clock nine thirty ten o'clock rolled around and we would shower and we would fucking leave and I would go home back into my prison and then it was one day that I just happened to wake up and uh, my wife, Sharon, was talking to me and she was like, what are we going to do? And I really didn't know. I didn't have an answer for her. And she was like, you have to fix this. I can't go back into the unknowing. And I was like, you know, I'm going to get back in. I'm going to rebuild the business. I'm going to do this. And she was like, no, like, I don't want that. I, I, need, I need security. I've, I've never had to live like this before. So I did something that I, I really had to do was swallow my pride and I called one of my mentors who had a company and I asked them could I work for them. And that was probably the most painful thing that I had to do because I had asked for a job because these people were like, I was their testimony, I was their case study. I had to go back and ask them to pay me. Man, that was fucking tough. I had to go back to the place that I said I never was going to be and I had to ask for what I felt like was a handout. But when they saw me or when they talked to me, they're like, hey, sure, man, sure. What do you want to do? We'll put you on our coaching staff. We'll give you some clients. We'll do this and we'll give you X amount of dollars. And I went back into this space and I was like, sure, I'll do it. And by that time, I had slowly started to rebuild the business. I had took down a property or two. I was really going through the rigmarole, but I wasn't successful, not by my own right. But I had property. I had got back, I was rebuilding the empire. And I remember specifically being on the phone with somebody and it was an old guy and they had got this guy into this coaching program. And during this time I was in the, I was in the coach, I was a coach. And he told me, he was like, hey, I use my credit card for this program. I got a payment coming up in 30 days and I need to get a property. I don't have any income. And I don't know how I'm gonna pay this back, I need you to help me. And I was like, man, I, I can't help you. Did someone ask you to get into this and you gave your last to do this? Man, I just couldn't do it. You see, it wasn't who I was. All of these conflicts about who I was, getting my ass kicked in this corner, rolling out onto the mat, taking as much pain that I could, I still couldn't go in and, and be something that I wasn't because it was against the fiber of my being of not the titles that I gave myself of who I thought I was, but who I was as a person. So I know a lot of guys out there think that they're going to just roll into this thing and be like, I'm a this thing or I'm that. But when you really question who you are as a man, it questions the fiber of your being, not the titles that you've given yourself. 
You see, when you go through your own pits of hell and you stay in the prison that you define for yourself, sometimes the question of who I am has to come to the surface. But it isn't about what you do because we can all do a thing. But if it makes you question who you are, then those are the things that you really have to notice. What comes up for you? What gets you emotional? What makes you say, you know, I just can't do this. This hurts me more doing this than trying to lie to myself and accept the thing that I thought that I was. Ball accounts and purposes, I was a coach. I know that I wanted to help people, but I didn't want to help people in the thing that I believed that caused me to be in the pain that I was in. I know that I couldn't turn around and just take from people in an area that, that didn't define myself and my own personal integrities, even though I needed at the time. I told this guy, I was like, you know, how, how is your family? How would you get in this place? And he started talking to me and I started coaching him on the real side of business, the real side of who you had to be, that you had to really take a look at this, that you will not succeed in a month, but who you can succeed or the way that you can succeed is going and taking a look at who you are as a person and really committing to that thing and making the commitments and making your yeses, yeses and your noes, noes and really showing up and owning the responsibilities that got you in this place to not have anything for you to hang your hat on this one thing that may save you, may not save you at all because you are still the person driving the ship. And I remember that conversation deeply because he cried on the phone with me when he started describing to me how he had got in that place. That he was an old guy and he had nothing to show and he had lost his wife. His kids didn't talk to him. He had no idea what he was doing, but he knew that he had to do something. Yet he was in the same situation that he had been in in the past and he was just searching for a way out. I actually called the office that I worked for at the time as a coach and I asked them to give this guy a return on his money because I just couldn't coach him. And if they weren't going to give him a return on his money that I was going to have to decline coaching him and maybe have them send him to someone else because I thought that that was the wrong thing to do. Uh, later, I got a call from that guy's uh, son-in-law who had said that he didn't know that that he was his, his father-in-law was in that situation, didn't know that his father-in-law was there, but it was the conversation between he and I that caused him to reach out to his son-in-law for help. He talked to him about his stuff and things began to come to light for him. Later, that guy actually called me because he had my phone directly and he would thank me for putting him into a situation where he had to choose himself over the vehicle and make some changes and that his life had changed because of it. And that he did move forward with some of the projects that he was looking at, but not the initial one, not the one that he thought was going to save him, but it was the saving and the choosing of who he had to be to move into this space that was really the deciding factor. And because of it, he had built up a relationship with his family that had he had lost. I said all that to say, sitting in this corner, moving into this space of listening to my wife says she didn't want to continue on the way that she had, really that she had no faith in me. That the failure that I had brought us into with moving from building this big business to losing it all, to now me wanting to go back in there and doing the same thing all over again, she didn't want that. That maybe that and I'm not going to say maybe she didn't believe that it was possible. And because I couldn't give her any security in the fact that I was going to make it work and that all I was really doing was searching for myself and trying to get back the title that I had lost because that was the only thing that I knew how to do that wasn't good enough for her. And for all accounts and purposes, why would she believe that? Because I, I had no idea either. I just knew that I had to do something. But I knew that I couldn't go back the way that I came and that I couldn't rely on the vehicles to save me. It had to be me. Of all the searching that I did, here's what I found. Of all the seminars that I attended, of all the programs that I watched, of all the spiritual shit that I went through, the church, the programs, the um, everything. There was never a true answer to, to that question of who am I? There was only bits and pieces and gold nuggets of things that required me to show up in a moment. Crying in this wall required me to actually, when the timer went off, it required me to roll back on the mat, even though it was tough, even though it was painful, even though there was no win in there, there was total loss. Those choosings to get onto the mat and continue to find my own soul, even past the pain that right in those moments became the wins. 
even though there were losses because they weren't victory wins. They were wins for me in, the dis in, in spite of those losses. Moving towards being a coach in an environment that I didn't want to be because I knew that I had to do something for my family, but I knew that there was a vehicle for me that had to make me choose my own personal integrities versus the integrity of, some, of somebody else and, and stand for those integrities caused me to make different decisions even in the face of you know, this being a saving grace for me and my family at the time, I still went against the grain because I believed it was the right thing to do for me, whether I stayed or not. Going to all those seminars and those places looking for answers, while this may be a, it may sound good to be like, hey guys, let's hold hands, sing Kumbaya, ask the question, who am I, and still leave with no answers. When I did find out for myself, maybe not for those other people, but I found that it was just my own certainty in myself and who I was, even stripped away without the titles. It was the decision to choose me for a change. That became the wake up call in my life. I didn't need a title to define Victor. I had my own personal things that I felt like in my life were right and they were wrong. It just became just a decision to just choose me. Because all the images that I had of being a man from watching my father grow up and try to raise me from his highs and lows, and his peaks and valleys in his marriage, whether he had successes or losses, didn't matter. Those are the images that I had. When I had my own children, I had to make my own decisions about how I was going to raise my own children. And those were right and they were wrong, but they were my images. And at some point along the way of providing for my kids, those images were also shattered as I lost my business, as I lost my titles, as the titles that held me up in my moments of inadequacies were destroyed. All I had and all that was exposed were just images of me, right and wrong. And I chose them. You see, here, here's what I found in all of my searching for the questions of who I am. Who I am is who the fuck I say I am. It's the choice of who I choose to be at that time. There's no right or wrong in that. Without the titles, there's just my choices and my commitments to be who I want to be. I'll say that again. Without titles, there's the choices of being who I choose and owning those choices. Man, this may not be a TV show that, that, that solves something or you can go to and say, oh shit, this guy told me who I was. Here's what I'm saying to you in plain English. You choose who you are. There is no, there's no treasure box out there that God has hidden behind some tree, behind some man that can give you the answer to that question. There is the choice of who you choose you are. And there's the being of that person as you are right now. There's no one that will make you feel worthy. There is just your pain and there is just your prison. And then there is just your choice. And then there is just your certainty of who you will be in this moment. And that's it. And when that moment passes. And your time has come that you decided that you've won. You can choose to be someone else. You can choose to go on to the next thing. And it is within your commitments of those choices of living a certain way. When I say certain way, meaning like you making your yeses, yeses and your noes, noes. Jesus said, make your yeas, yeas and your nays, nays. But when you do that, you are committed to be the person that you are choosing to be because there is no path and there's no description of what that is. You are sent in this world, in this universe by God himself to be a creator.